And that way, what I read is on the stream too. So for anybody who misses the lives, it's there so you can review it and get, catch up on the chapters and adventures. Uh, I make my own cookies, thank you. Oh, 35 chapters behind, it's okay. You can catch up, you can catch up online on my YouTube channel. Just make sure you subscribe because I'm trying to ever slowly get to a thousand followers. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so. We will be continuing reading. Dinah Rift. I should probably lower this a little bit more. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. So, as usual, we will be reading the last paragraph of the previous chapter to catch ourselves up and remember. Um, previously on Dino Rift. <clears throat> a cynical chuckle left Archer's mouth. Idiots, maybe. But spineless? He opened the front tent flaps. Tell that to your friends that we just caught. An unconscious Quinley laid flat on the ground as Thoracor men restrained her the best they could. Off to the side, E, A, and Theo had been apprehended with security, keeping close tabs on them. Sorry, Cam. E, A called over, disheartened. We tried. Chapter 37. No, it's not me. It's, well, it actually is me in a way. I do the voice acting for the character of this comic that my friend made. Um, <laughs> so technically it is me, actually. <laughs> okay. Chapter 37. Nature. Wait, already? What do you mean, already? Hola! Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Okay. Chapter 37. Yeah, me too. I like it a lot. <clears throat> it was given to me considering, you know, I did the voice acting for it. And I, and I, however they did it, I don't know the correct terms, but like they animated my movements. Like, so I did act on set, but then I like characterized my body. And yeah. So I'm animated, but I actually did the acting. I don't know. Anyways, continuing on. Chapter 37. Now this is what I call an interesting situation, Archer smirked. In a secure circle of sorts, he had the teenagers under the watch of his men to the right of him. Theo and Emily. <laughs> Let me see if that way I have better lighting. Okay. Theo and Emily Ann were in front of him, and Sebastian stood off to the left with more Soracor personnel. All this time, we thought curious dinos were picking stuff off from our sights, and it was you all along, Mr. Lewis. Theo flexed his cheek muscles. Do whatever you want with me. Just let my daughter go. No can do, Doc, Archer shook his head. I've got orders to eliminate everyone except the kids. Cameron piped up and nodded at Sebastian. Even Mr. GQ over there? Head down, Sebastian said nothing. No, you're not, he called out as she stepped into the open space between everyone. You're not touching Sebastian. Everyone who wasn't associated with Thoracor glared at her. Emily Ann gave Sebastian a disgusted glance. There, why are you defending that human trash? Cam joined in. He tossed us into this mess. He also tried to save my life earlier, Viv answered without waver. Having an audience gave her a bit of anxiety, but her gut told her to continue. Mistakes can define someone, but definitions can change. Archer coughed to break things up. That's enough kumbaya for one day. He began walking towards the ex-businessman. If y'all want to stand around and watch, that's your choice. Viv situated herself between the two men. By the sounds of the radio lady, you need me and my friend a lot. Arms folded, she mustered all she had to stare back into rugged Archer's eyes. If you kill Sebastian, I guarantee you will never be compliant. Cam's ears burned as he listened to every word coming out of her mouth. A what? Putting pieces together on the sidelines, Ea nodded her eyebrows together. Soracor wants you back in the present? Viv nodded remaining in place as she kept addressing Archer. That won't happen unless you let, Seb let Sebastian go free. 
after rubbing her lips back and forth along with teeth, Oscar broke into a menacing chuckle. How's about I just kill all of you and tell my boss the bugs got you? Sebastian pushed past Viv. Have you had enough? Sorry. I don't know why my mic always automatically turns it lower. Should we start over? It's only been a page and a half, two, two pages. <laughs> Hello, Ham! Love you! Bye! <laughs> Have a good night. Was it, like, super low, or should we start over? Like, was it, could you hear it, at least? Can you hear it at least? I should have double checked. I always try to check, but it automatically always goes like lower for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, I know it's better because I turned it up. <laughs> but was it like super low to where you couldn't hear what I was saying? <laughs> that was funny. Audio was good. Well, yeah, on TikTok it's good. Yeah. Okay. I'll just start over and then I'll edit. I'll, I'll try to remember to edit it from the beginning. All right, chapter 37. Now this is what I call an interesting situation, Archer smirked. In a secure circle of s sorts, he had the teenagers under the watch of his men to the right of him. Theo and Emily Ann were in front of him, and Sebastian stood off to the left with more Sora Corps personnel. All this time, we thought curious dinos were picking stuff off from our sights. And it was you all along, Mr. Lewis. Theo flexed his cheek muscles. Do whatever you want with me. Just let my daughter go. No can do, Doc. Archer, Archer shook his head. I got orders to eliminate everyone except the kids. Cameron piped up and nodded at Sebastian. Even Mr. G GQ over there? Head down, Sebastian said nothing. No, you're not, Viv called out as she stepped into the open space between everyone. You're not touching Sebastian. Everyone who wasn't associated with Sorokor glared at her. Emily Ann gave Sebastian a disgusted glance. Viv, why are you defending that human trash? Cam joined in. He tossed us into this mess, and he also tried to save my life earlier, Viv answered without waver. Having an audience gave her a bit of anxiety, but her gut told her to continue. Mistakes can define someone, but definitions can change. Archer coughed to break things up. That's enough kumbaya for one day. He began walking towards the ex-businessman. If you all want to stand around and watch, that's your choice. Viv situated herself between the two men. By the sounds of the radio lady, you need me and my friend alive. Arms folded, she mustered all she had to stare back into rugged Archer's eyes. If you kill Sebastian, I guarantee you we will never be compliant. Cam's ears burned as he listened to every word coming out of her mouth. They what? Putting pieces together on the sidelines, EA nodded her eyebrows together. Sorokor wants you back in the present? Viv nodded. Remaining in place as she kept addressing Archer. That won't happen unless you let Sebastian go free. After rubbing his lips back and forth along his teeth, Archer broke into a menacing chuckle. How's about I just kill all of you and tell my boss the bugs got you? Sebastian pushed past Viv. Having had enough... Same as my name here, Bad Pika P. Bickering. Just get it over with. He slipped a thankful glance at the young girl. If it wasn't for me and what I did with Sorokor, none of us would be here right now. Archer shrugged and readjusted his rifle strap. Fine by me. I know where Gigantosaurus can be located. All gazes turned to Theo. The scientist surprised himself that he'd silenced and caught the collective attention of everyone. Whether some didn't understand the importance or comprehended completely, everyone anticipated the next words out of, do out of Dr. Lewis's mouth. If I'm not mistaken, that's a rather large payday for you. 
Theo remarked with a bad taste in his mouth. I've heard the chatter. They're considered rare, correct? Even Sebastian perked up. That's the dinosaur mother load. E.A. looked to her father with bafflement. Dad, what are you doing? The way I see it, they now have the most valuable prehistoric asset in their custody. Confidence and regret mixed within Theo's voice. Me. E.A. immediately thought of the journal he'd given her. You're offering them your knowledge so they can keep doing what they're doing? Theo gave his daughter an endearing stare. If it means saving you and everyone else here, then yes. Interesting proposition. Archer stroked his chin and the temptation of a big payday held on to him. I'll have to run this intel past my higher-ups, of course. He began walking back to the command tent. Sharp and you kids, you're with me. Without any snippy remarks, Cam followed beside Viv. After what she'd said earlier, he needed to understand. You seriously trust that sharp guy know now? I've learned a lot about him in the last few hours, Viv responded with a shrug, which was all she could do with her wrists bound once more. And it's true, he tried to save me from dinos with wicked talons. What she'd said silenced him. Earlier that day, he thought there had been a chance that she'd perished by the Turrent River. To discover she almost could have died twice sent him his insides into a tizzy, which reminded him of the other unrelated tizzy she'd given him just a couple of minutes ago in the command <laughs> Ah! <laughs> oh, sorry. Which reminded him of the other unrelated tizzy she'd given him just a couple of minutes ago in the command tent. Also, are we going to talk about what almost happened in there? Don't ruin the moment, kid. Don't ruin the moment. Seriousness in Viv's face waned into bashfulness as they entered the room. Later, but definitely. So in case you weren't here for the previous episode, they may have gotten a little close there in this smoochy smooch. <laughs> Derek, you're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Evening. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get serious, people. Let's be serious. On their own, in a different tent, EA sat across from her father. I'm supposed to be saving you from all of this. She rubbed the back of her cap with her sneakered foot. Not get you deeper into it. Theo looked her in the eyes before switching his gaze to a distant corner where a Soricor operative stood watch. An easy, sorry, an uneasy, or sorry, his, his uneasy reserve made her pull her back, head back. Um, hello, hello, hope you had an awesome day. I did miss all the good stuff. Seriously, it's on the previous chapter, so just go to my YouTube channel, um, and watch the previous one of the reading of this book from this one. It's in there. <laughs> All right, now that I'm back to focus, okay. His uneasy reserve made her pull her head back in. Puzzlement. Dad, what aren't you telling him? You shouldn't. He closed his eyes as he hung his head, his shaking head. I love that you came for me, honey, but you shouldn't have come for me. Within seconds, EA's heart seemed to swell and shatter at the same time. Wanting to reply, all she could respond with at first was an audible audible exhale from her open mouth. Unexpected ache coated the one word that finally came out. Dad. Sweetie, when I first ended up here, not on my own terms, believe me, it was stressful. He lifted his fettered, ha fettered hands to awkwardly rub the back of his neck, as recounting his time in the era made him rethink everything he'd faced. But over time, I went from surviving to thriving. Ye struggled to accept his perspective. Are you saying you want to stay and live out the rest of your life here? Theo gave her the most loving stare a father could ha give his child. Emily Ann, most of my life has been studying dinosaurs in the bone. Now I get to do it in the flesh. He leaned forward and took one of her hands. I know you were hoping for me to come back home with you, but this has become your home now. She finished off for him, though it sent her body into a worse ache than what her hands had experienced earlier. With her hand 
in both of his. He rubbed hers with both thumbs. Of course, you always have the option of staying here with me. The complete opposite of what she'd hoped for. She stared at their joined hands in his alternative, alternative slowly seeped. <coughs> sorry. She stared at their joined hands as his alternative, alternative slowly seeped into her mind. I don't. She recoiled her hand back with a small jerk. I don't know. Bedtime stories, Gabby. Yes, thank you, Carm. Thank you. <sighs> Okay, hold on, I need to like yawn. I was writing it. <sighs> Inside the command tent, Keith Archer sat in front of the radio while Sebastian and the teens were being guarded behind him. A tiny bit of static popped from the radio before a voice came through. This is Voorhees. What's going on, Archer? Certain variables have been brought to my attention, which I wanted to bring to yours as well. Archer began with an ominous tone. Seems we now have quite the useful resource who's offering their intel. Offering their... Felicia finally understood. You found Theo? Archer chuckled. More like he tried to organize an attack on our base, but we handled the situation. So he's dead? Grinning, Archer leaned back in the chair and folded his hands behind his head to stretch his bent arms. Even better. Better than being dead? He knows where to find Gigantosaurus. Nothing came from Felicia's end. Five seconds turned into ten. Archer turned to look at his captives. Cam, Viv, and Sebastian didn't say a word. Uh, Felicia? Archer grew uncomfortable with every passing moment. Are you still- Sorry, something else came in. Felicia held a serious tone, followed by clearing her throat. So we're using Theo for his knowledge of the dinosaur and terrain. What if he's lying? He knows the stakes, considering we also have his daughter. Archer responded without an outcome, an ounce of bother. That changed when he added, And these kids you want us to bring back, they insist on keeping everyone alive, including Mr. Sharp, or else they won't comply. Felicia sighed. Freaking kids. Technically... We are young adults, and we can hear you, Cam remarked. Viv smirked at his counter while nudging his shoulder with hers. For crying out loud, Felicia made an exasperated groan. I'm here too, Fee, Sebastian added to the little chat. And there's something you should know about the rifts. Quiet, sharp, Archer growled, not wanting things to get out of hand. It's okay, Keith. Though getting overwhelmed, Felicia found herself drawn in more when she heard Sebastian's voice. Let him speak. Surprised by the turn in the conversation's direction, Sebastian took a tentative step forward. From what I've discussed with others, there are more and more unanticipated rifts popping up. It's possible that what we're doing, he cut himself off, remembering the unorthodox way he got fired, what Sorokor is doing could lead to destroying the world with space-time energy. Slightly confused and troubled, Cam whispered to Viv, what's he going on about? Shuffling sounds came from the present time side. You may be onto something, said. So I'm about to talk to the board about what's happening. Sebastian stared at the radio, shocked that she would agree. Uh, okay, then, great. Meanwhile, I'll be updating some clients on the Gigantosaurus' status. Felicia shifted back into business mode. Keep me informed. You all heard the lady. Nodding, Archer stood back up. Time to catch some di- Time to catch some dino da cash. I almost said dino dash. <laughs> dino cash. Ugh. <laughs> Is that a follow up? No, no, no. It's YouTube live. YouTube live. I'm streaming on my YouTube. I do my bedtime story readings on YouTube. All right. A couple of minutes earlier, present day. So he's dead. Felicia sat by the high tech radio in the Soracore facility. Her cell phone buzzed beside her, prompting her to pick it up. Even better, Archer responded. She unlocked the phone's screen to read a message. Better than being dead? He knows where to find Gigantosaurus. The news from the past made Felicia physically pause, but her eyelids opened wide at the information she just received. Rift just opened in San Francisco a block wide. A trolley of civilians and two vehicles crashed through. 
Local police are at the scene, and feds are on the way. How do you want to address this? Uh, Felicia? Archer stirred her from the disconcerting predicament. Are you still the- Sorry, something else came in. Felicia cleared her throat. So we're using Theo for his knowledge of the dinosaurs and train. What if he's lying? And that's the end of that chapter. <gasps> Thank you for the rose! Thank you. Alright. Chapter 38, let's go! Felicia sat in front of her laptop at her desk a couple of minutes later. Voices came from the computer. <laughs> I love it. I love that so much. I'm here now. Welcome here. I love the quirky butt so much. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's the best. Okay. All right, chapter 38. Felicia sat in front of her laptop at her desk a couple of minutes later. Voices came from the computer, greeting ones back and forth. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and making chit chat. Sora Core board members have been con contacted for an impromptu meeting. All right. <laughs> I love that one so much. You got it. Okay. Um. All right, we might as well get started, Felicia spoke up, getting everyone's attention. Thank you all for sacrificing some time out of your day. For those of you who were sleeping, my apologies. <laughs> but what I have to discuss is something that we cannot put off any longer. Knock, knock, knock. Felicia turned her head to her office door. Come in. Anthony Bartoloni strolled in. No, there's a couple... Anthony's that I know that are kind of a little us keeping it PG today as well <laughs> gonna finish that sentence interesting <laughs> uh, sporting one of his sharpest suits he heard the <laughs> oh my gosh that is the cutest all oh, the cat paws okay 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 Freaking cute. Okay. Felicia turned her head to her office door. Come in. Anthony Bartoloni strolled in, sporting one of his sharpest suits. He heard the voices of his fellow board members and sat down in a chair across from Felicia. As for Felicia, she'd never dealt with Bartoloni in this environment and wondered how he would act. Can only imagine. Now that we're all here, we need to discuss the rift situation. Is this related to the incident in Singapore? Mr. Zing inquired, sleepy-eyed. Our men have contained the arthropleura. Injured are having their treatments covered by our contingency funds. The Norwegian Thomason piped up. Three men died, correct? There's been another incident near the heart of San Francisco, Felicia brought up, which induced multiple faces staring at her in alarm. The rift closed up, trapping almost 30 people in the prehistoric time. A few gasped. Miss Favreau, the French woman, spoke in apprehension. They are getting bigger? Mr. Zing rubbed his forehead. They are getting worse. So we'll just keep monitoring them as closely as possible, Bar Bartoloni suggested, skimming through the emails in his phone. Keep business going as usual. He would. The other board members within Felicia's screen uttered bothered noises. Oh, that's what I want! <laughs> then we'll have even better access, Bartoloni countered. No, sorry. And what if the rift engulfs an entire city? Another member inquired, which made quite a few realize the perilous ramifications. Then we'll have even better access, Bartoloni countered, nonchalant with an ounce of smugness. And as long as we have access to what makes all of us an excess amount of money, I don't see what the problem is. The problem is that the rifts keep getting bigger, Felicia threw back as professional as possible. Everyone else seemed to be getting the idea except for her new colleague. Forget city blocks are even cities. By our anal analysts' calculations, they could grow at a rate of possibly spanning entire continents by some point. More people might get trapped in the past, leading to possible casualties. And who knows what screwing with time will do overall. 
Bartoloni let out a small chuckle. But with the right perspective, or should I say, motivations, he clicked some buttons on his cell phone, it's no longer a problem. One of the board members received a notification. Within seconds, more cell phones dinged and beeped. Miss Favreau received an email right before Thomas ended. Mr. Zing's eyes opened wide as he opened his email to find a video of a familiar hotel room. The door to the room opened. He walked in, along with a woman who wasn't his wife. Mr. Barnley, what is the meaning? It wasn't difficult getting dirt on each and every one of you, Bartoloni remarked. Victorious in his delivery, up and out of the chair, he made his way over to eventually glare into the laptop screen. Especially since this little close-knit Sorocor family you've got going here did most of the digging on each other. I have two words for everyone. Better firewalls. Flabbergasted, Felicia had backed up in her wheeled desk chair as she stated, or she stared at her phone in utter disbelief. Anthony, this is... As long as dinosaurs are coming through those rifts, there are no issues. Determination smothered every single one of his words. And if anyone here at Sorokor blows even the faintest whistle, I will destroy Sorokor. Felicia simply let her hand rest on her skirted thigh. It dumbfounded her how blinded Anthony Bartoloni had become with his greed. Admittedly, she'd more than appreciated what she'd been able to make of herself with dinosaur sales. Now she'd seen one of the ugliest sides of all face to face. Pleasure chatting with you all, Bartoloni closed the laptop before perching on the edge of Felicia's desk. Now let's discuss those gigantosauruses, shall we? Uh, no, thank you. Good time to come in. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Chapter 39. Let's see. We got 50 chapters, I think, on this one. I think it's 50. And, uh, and also a bonus epilogue. Yeah, there's 50. All right. We might not get through all the rest of them tonight. This might be the second to last one. Bartoloni. I know, right? More like Barfaloni. <laughs> you can quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chapter 39. Minutes later, five Sorokor vehicles tore through semi-dense semi forest. So far, it had been a quiet trip for Theodore and Emily Ann Lewis in the back of one of the army-style jeeps. After all the time of being apart and missing each other, they met an emotional impasse. Over in another bumpy vehicle, Cameron and Vivian had also been sitting in silence. Though they didn't talk about anything, their eyes had connected more than a few times. Cam arched his eyebrows and leaned his head at her as if to say, Are you okay? Viv grinned and nodded, then bobbed her head in response, I'm good, you? His smile reached almost from ear to ear to utter the words, I love you, behind a couple of random people didn't seem like the right moment. He wanted to give her a sign of affection, but a kiss, even on the cheek, also didn't seem... Wait, where... oh. <laughs> appropriate at the time. Then he reached into his pant pocket. Viv's cell phone slid into the side of her pant. Surprise took over her face. You've had it? Again, he nodded. You dropped it before heading into the river. It was all I had of you while I thought. He started to take his hand away. Viv caught him by the wrist. I get it. Both of them looked down at their hands. Gently, he turned his palm over, letting her fingers glide towards his... Ah! A fiery heat engulfed them with their digits intertwined. Ah! The residual heat licked up... The okay. <clears throat> I see where this is going. <clears throat> Sorry. Forgive me. I wasn't prepared. <clears throat> Both of them looked down at their hands. Gently, he turned his palm over, letting her fingers glide toward his. A fiery heat engulfed them when their digits intertwined. The residual heat licked up their arms, eventually inflaming every bone and cell within them. When they were little, they, oh, that's weird. When they were little, they'd innocently held hands play plenty of times. Switch for that one. <laughs> so, yeah. This time, it set both of their hearts blazing for, okay. 
This time it set both of their hearts blazing for each other. At that moment, Cam recalled what EA had said to him early on. A fire doesn't know if it's a fire until the spark has been lit. Their hands being clasped tight reminded Viv of when they'd locked hands together in the chaos of the river. That also brought to mind the word she'd only been able to partially tell him. It was as if her heart nudged her chin downward to speak. Cam, I... Screech. <clears throat> she jostled forward along with Cam as the cheek came to a halt. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's perfect. It's so good. Creatures scattered from the river banks. River bank as the vehicles had passed the forest's edge. Both teenagers unclipped their seatbelts as they noticed the other jeeps had already arrived and had started unloading equipment and their occupants. Just a quick question, Derek. Uh, does the, the woman that you have doing the audiobooks go into romance novel voice acting during those scenes? <laughs> I mean, I think we can all agree, at that moment it kind of needed to. <laughs> Oh, man. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Sebastian, still cuffed with zip ties, passed by, being led along by two Sora Corps troopers. At the riverbank, Theo and Archer approached a, approached a gangway leading to another form of transportation. Hold on. <sighs> <laughs> Archer called over two. Call, wait, sorry. Archer called over to two of his men. Get that apex predator trailer rig hooked up. Then he snapped his fingers at others. Stole cats. Make sure we've got enough ammo for this trip. Don't need any surprises. Theo noticed a few large claws. Claw slashes up and down the side of the hole. Remember that time you had a Spinosaurus family attack this thing? Halfway across the rift boat, Archer stopped mid step. You were there for that? Smirking, Theo began his embarkment. I most definitely was. Over on solid ground, Cam and Viv caught up with EA. Your dad has a plan, right? Cam couldn't see her facial expression as he just came up behind her. I sure hope he does. EA didn't say a word. All she did was carry on walking toward the boat. Viv tried to match her stride. He's going to help us get back home, right? Still, EA didn't respond. Running ahead, Cam made it past her and turned around to walk backward. EA, are you okay or- <laughs> Boy, I am the least bit okay. EA's voice rose as she spoke with both feet planted to the ground. I risked my life going to Sorokor. Got hurled through a freaking rift. I've had to eat disgusting bugs, take care of you two googly-eyed, hormone-raging twerps, walk miles in a godforsaking dinosaur world, only to have my father tell me he does not want to come back home. The mouths of both teens gaped open. From the boat, Theo had heard everything his daughter just had just spewed. Every Sorokor employee with an earshot had also paused to watch the show. All Cam could do was stare at her wide-eyed, realizing the hurricane he'd just unleashed from within her. Whoa. EA turned every which way to realize she'd become a spectacle. Embarrassed and fuming, she let out an aggravated roar before stomping away into part of the forest. That's my neck. Theo had almost made it to the teen's position. Emily, honey, let me... Hold on, Theo. Give her space. Viv got in his way. Her tone equal measures of firm and gentle. And time. She needs that. But I... Scratching at the stubble on his face, a reluctant Theo gave in. Okay, you're, you're right. Once Viv had observed him start to head back to the boat, she turned and didn't find her friend anywhere. Uh, Cam? One of the guards turned to go after the fuming Lewis girl. Another employee stopped him. Dude, you sure you want to deal with that? Cam had followed EA into the dense forest. Tree roots and jagged stones made a difficult path. Eventually he found her nestled up against a mossy boulder, hugging her duffel bag as if it were her childhood teddy bear. 
She'd been sobbing into the fabric of the bag. Everything she'd been holding on to seemed to have been nothing but wishful thinking. Hey, Em. Cam noticed the streaks running down her cheeks as he approached and planned on soaking his words in warmth. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to push. No, Cam, don't be sorry. A pulled her face away from the duffel bag to look at him as he came up beside her. I was about to explode anyway, and you got caught in the crossfires. Yeah, well... He kicked a twig to the side before plopping down beside her. To be fair, I'm kind of used to you yet telling me off by now. After a sniffle, she snorted. Don't feel bad for yelling at me either, he continued, not looking her in the eye, but directing his voice to her. Let your emotions be what they are. When you try to deny them, even if you think you need to push them down or be strong, you're denying yourself of getting past those emotions. And you're also denying yourself of being you. Ie sucked in a deep breath. She wiped all tears from her face before looking at the teenager beside her. In the beginning, he'd been nothing but a nuisance. As for the last few hours, she'd been she'd seen who he really was and had grown to actually like the young man. Thank you, Cam. Her shaky right hand patted him on his nearest forearm. You're just a sweetheart underneath all that snark, aren't you? He chuckled. I have my moments. And it's nice to know you care, she added, finally meeting his gaze. Little bro. Surprised and amused, Cam rose an eyebrow. Bro, huh? Does that mean I'm allowed to annoy you even more now? A.A. snorted again. Don't me, don't make me retract that. Nah, I wouldn't want you to do that, he responded with a grin. Considering how things had been in the beginning, he embraced their buddy-buddy relationship. Besides, if you're going to be my sis, after he'd stood and extended a hand to help her up, I'm going to need some advice from you on talking to girls. Her hand clapped into his. In that case, you'll need all the help you can get. It's true. <laughs> My game was eyes closed and all. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> all right, that was the end of chapter thirty-nine. We're into chapter forty. Oh my gosh. We got ten more chapters to go in an epilogue. Oh my goodness. Let's see. We start at thirty-seven. So we've only done three chapters so far. All right. There's, gonna, there's a couple short chapters coming up ahead, so we might be able to do at least two more. We'll see what goes. <laughs> Chapter 40. It didn't take long for Sorokor, heavy-duty boat, to get loaded up and heading down the river. They pulled a floating cage specifically shaped for large predators behind the vessel. One of my favorite bonding seeds to write. It was. That was a cute one. I like that. Thank you, thank you. All right, Sebastian. So, oh wait, wait, hold on. They pulled. Okay, I read that. In the front cockpit, Theodore Lewis directed the captain and Archer of where to go, points of interest, and how long it should take. Sebastian sat in one of the corners, up and down the vessel. Archer's men remained armed and cautious. For those who were used to it, the weapons were of no bother and served as protection. Vivian leaned against the left side railing. Wish there weren't so many guns around us. Freaks me out. Cameron stood beside her, enamored at how the sun... I just, I don't even, I haven't even read the, I just know where it's going. Oh, man. I can do this. I can do this. <clears throat> Cameron stood beside her, enamored at how the sunset's light made her hair gleam in shades. He never knew existed. Pretty sure you'd be singing a different tune if we were surrounded by bugs, though. If that were the case, then I'd ask for the biggest gun they'd got. They've got. She remarked with a confident smirk. I don't doubt it. He said. <laughs> he slid closer so their arms brushed against each other's. Speaking of singing tunes, I. Uh... Okay, hold on. Speaking of singing tunes, I, uh, I found the playlist. <laughs> at first she squinted at him, then she recalled he'd returned her cell phone. Red immediately flushed her cheeks. Oh, you, uh, she <laughs> began picking at the cuticles of her fingers. You did, huh? Her bashfulness only encouraged his endearment for her. There's a lot of good artists on there. 
The song titles were interesting too. Come on, dude, don't make her more embarrassed than she already is. Don't even call her out. We both, you guys both know. You bo both know. <laughs> There's no need to dig it in. <laughs> really subtle, huh? <laughs> she chuckled to herself, <laughs> realizing there was no turning back now. She'd anticipated and imagined this moment, and it had finally arrived in the most unconventional way and circumstances. It was nice holding hands with you in the Jeep. Hope I don't embarrass you by asking this. You probably already did. <laughs> but stiffness seized his throat as he looked across the boat in thoughtfulness. How long have you thought of me in that way? <sighs> Viv twisted her pouted lips to the side. I've been fond of you for a while now. Her word choice made him laugh. He put on an old-timey voice. Fond, Lady Lancaster. I reckon that means you've been waiting for me to clue in for a while now. Warmth on his arm trickled into hers, which made her nestle into him more. God, I've had to exercise a lot of patience. Ah! <laughs> Viv, how come you never said anything? His question brought on a queasiness that she thought <laughs> the boat would have given her. Well, we've been such good friends for so long. <laughs> How many romance novels have you narrated? <laughs> this is my first one. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I have um, modeled for the cover of a romance novel, and uh, that's the closest I've gotten to it. I'm quite fond of uh, romance novels. I've never actually read one, um, but just the idea of it, just it's so cringy, it's hilarious to me. That's kind of summarizing it in the best I can think of. <laughs> so, because of that, it's like my favorite because it's just so funny to me. Time for some good dreams. Nice. <laughs> Clueless and Cam. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. <clears throat> well, we've been such good friends for so long and I didn't want to ruin that. Don't use that cliche on me, girl. He countered giving her a playful nudge before reaching an arm around her shoulders to pull her in even closer. Better question, when did you realize that you knew? She spun on her toes just enough to angle her face up and gaze into his eyes. Many instances came to mind. To choose which time she fell for him, or fell all over again, became impossible. I didn't think when was ever a variable. I don't think when was ever a variable, ever since we were young, really. You've been by my side almost every day, had my back on rough days, even helped me out of those rough days by making me laugh and tell it hurt in the most incredible way. Although with random science trivia, along with random science trivia, there's so much in, my, in your brain that amazes me and keeps me on my toes. As she poured everything out of her, she kept squeezing his hand as another sign of affection. Remember the first time you ever read me one of your stories? Cam took his gaze off her eyes for a moment. You mean my Dino Man book? Oh, geez, that one was absolutely horrible. But of all people, you chose to let me into the world you'd created. Since then, I've wanted to be a part of your world in every sense of the word. Aww! <laughs> That's funny. That was, that was pretty good. Uh. <sighs> Viv couldn't stop smiling as she spoke, and I want you to always be in mine, because... How could I not love you? Ah! For the first time, Cam thought his heart would beat so hard to the point of breaking a rib. And there's no other world I'd rather be in. Ah! Can't take it! I can't take it! His charming line made Viv grin so hard she thought she'd crack a tooth. Perfect time for my pickup line I just came up with randomly the other day on my stream. Don't worry. If you swoon, I'll catch you. You can use that quote also, Derek, in a future book. You can use my line. <laughs> Aw, thank you, Todd. Okay. <clears throat> His charming line made, line made Viv grin so hard she thought she'd crack a tooth. Then she growled and folded her arms together. Damn it, Cam. What? Confused, he stepped back. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, I actually read a Dino Man book when I was a kid. Oh, I knew it. I don't know if you saw my face, but I knew it. <laughs> I I feel like I know you just from reading your book. <laughs> uh, yes! 
Ah, uh, the words of Bad Pika P will forever be seen and heard and read. <laughs> okay. Back to uh, the classic guy gets in trouble already in the relationship that just began. <laughs> Leaning away from the railing, she shook her open hands up and down. It's, she huffed out loud. You can't go saying things like that, making me want to kiss you when there are weirdo dinosaurs hunters all around us. Uh, sorry? Back into the boat setting and not the romantic scene in his head, he understood her concerns. Pretty sure there isn't a private spot on this thing. At Soracor, employed str a Soracor employee strolled by with a hand on their rifle. Cam shook his head. Wish these Sora morons weren't an issue. <laughs> ah, F it, just do it anyways. The armed man had still been within earshot and spun on a dime. What's that you're saying, boy? Quickly realizing his mistake, Cam tried to deflect. I didn't mean to offend, though I get you all must be trigger happy and just want to shoot something because that's what you do, right? Provoked, the guy threw his open hand out, snagged the teenager by the neck, and pushed him against the rail. Want to see me shoot something, huh? Your little girlfriend may not like the target I pick. Terrified of what might happen, Viv stayed back a couple of feet while shouting, Get off him! Let him go! Cam placed his hands around the guy's wrist. Pretty sure your superior needs us alive. Ooh, I'll put you in acknowledgments too. Yes! <laughs> this is the best! The man smirked. That still leaves room for one wounded. <laughs> Splash. A wet creature barrels through. <gasps> yes! Hiss! Kothawak! Oh, I know that sound. Cam half stumbled as the Solar Core antagonist slammed sideways into the deck. The man tried to defend himself by throwing an arm up. A bluish crocodilian lizard chomped down on the exposed flesh of the forearm. Both Cam and Viv stood in shock and spoke nearly in unison. Nandy! By now, Archer and Theo had bolted out of the cockpit due to the commotion. Even EA rushed, had rushed over. Nandy, leave him alone, buddy. Cam pulled on the Nundasukish's shoulders, easing it off the injured man. Easy, easy now. A side glance let Nandy know that its friend was no longer in danger. It hissed once more at the armed man before being led to the side. What in all heck is going on down here? Archer shouted as soon as he noticed one of his men injured and laying on the deck. He unholstered his gun and pointed at the uninvited dinosaur. Did that thing do that to... Cam, do you know this Nundasukis? Theo pushed Archer's gun downward as he took a step closer. Have you bonded with it? It's taking a liking to me, yes. <laughs> That's how I would say it. It's taken a liking to me, yes? <laughs> Cam responded, wary of all the guns pointed at him and the dinosaur. Me too, Viv added shortly before Nandy hobbled over and rubbed its snout against one of her legs. I've even grown fond of the crazy ninja dog. Kill it, the sword core trooper set, stood up, holding his bleeding limb. That thing tried to rip my damn arm off. Before anyone could take aim, Theo stood defensively in front of the Nundasukis and the teens. Now hold on, this behavior is exactly what I've been studying. Once he figured he had a full audience, he continued. Every dinosaur that I've come across in this time is exactly, is easily taught what is friend or foe. Treat it as a friend, they'll view you as a friend. Shoot it with a gun or injure it in any way, it will see you as a threat. Well that is just any, that's just common sense, come on! Come on, Theo, you're smarter than that. As her father spoke, EA thought back to the time she greeted... Well, when it comes to animals, I should say. You know, people are different. People suck. As her father spoke, EA thought back to the time she greeted the Utah Raptor in his farmhouse basement. Soracor didn't want those findings leaked, because what's been perceived as being carnivores for so long would lose extreme monetary value. Theo stared directly at Archer. Which, in relation, is why I've been wanted, uh, is why I've been wanted dead. Correct. All Archer did was cross his arms and nod. Keep people misinformed as long as it fills your wallets, right? Theo added, drenching his words in utter repulsion. As for those gigantosauruses, I'm leading you to. I can't wait to see how they react to you all. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. That's the end of that chapter. Ooh, go Nandy. Okay. Chapter 41. Let's see, I want to make sure that there's enough for the last... Because I, I think I should break it up because it's still a lot of chapters to get to 50. You know, and keep you keep you wondering for the last few chapters, you know? So let's see, 41, 10, so like five. So I'll do at most five more. Let's see. One, two, three, four. That's a bit longer. So I'll save that one. Okay, so I'll just plan to go to chapter, let's see how long we've been, oh, we've only been going for 20 minutes. I try to do an hour reading. All right, let's just keep going to see what an hour brings. Theo explains, but no one wants to listen. I know, right? I mean, that's just the, how the world works in general. It's, it's just common sense, you know, give love, get love. How, what, hard, how hard of a concept is that, you know? Gosh. All right, chapter 41. Felicia swirled. The half full glass of seven hundred dollar Tuscan wine. She sat on a plush bar stool at the island of her kitchen. Unwinding after a stressful day, she hoped every sip would magically whisk the problems away. Anthony Bartoloni's threats still loomed. Well, don't be a horrible person and people won't have blackmail on you. It's easy. Rifts were probably popping up in other parts of the world, creating chaos that Sorokor would have to clean up yet again. Another sip of red liquid entered her mouth. She let the berry notes linger among her taste buds until the dry tannins had coated everything. Dang, can't, dang tannins! Buzz. She gulped down her drink before collecting her phone from the marble top counter. Zing's contact information popped up. Felicia answered. Thought you would have gone back to sleep. Not after all that stress of blackmail. After what I heard and saw from Bartoloni, that was no longer luxury, exactly what I just said. <laughs> she picked up on the di disturbance in, her t in his tone. He's probably tracking this call. This is an encrypted line, Zing cleared his throat. Others were on the fence, but I wanted to discuss more concerning the rifts with you. She nodded, pouring herself another drink as something she never thought she'd say came out. We can't let Sorokor go on like this anymore. Agreed. This has been the only time she'd ever heard him terrified of something. My proposal is that we destroy them. His solution brought her eyebrows together in puzzlement. How exactly are you expecting to destroy time-space energy? You can't. I mean, just physics, you can't. <laughs> just saying. Wait, where's the time on this? Hold on, let me add a dog. Uh, that's not the right one. Mm -hmm. What's the time on this? Because I thought it was always the time, but I guess not. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, it has been almost an hour. Okay. It moved. It moved. Okay. <clears throat> okay. My proposal is that we destroy them. His solution brought her eyebrows together in puzzlement. How exactly are you expected to destroy time space energy? Since we began this endeavor, I've had my own scientist working on manipulating the energy on an atomic level. He'd spoken in an everyday chit-chat manner. We have found a way to contain an inverted form of the energy. Although tested on a small scale, we believe that if exposed to the rifts, it could be used to... Felicia, hang on every word. To what? Zine paused. Considering everything he'd built with the means he'd taken from the gateway to the past world, to close them and perhaps destroy them. Felicia stopped her hand from bringing the wine glass to her lips. No more rifts. No more unruly threats to either time. It also mean, meant no more dinosaurs, and would lead to no more job. But the world would hopefully still be intact. Miss Voorhees? 
Felicia set her wine back down and collected herself. A decision had to be made. Let's do it. Contact the others, except Bartoloni. Mention of his name made her glance around. And let's hope our places aren't fucked. Oh, they probably are. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, everything happened. The world is about to end, pretty much. All right, let's see. I'll read one last chapter, and that'll be one hour. Chapter 42. Over halfway to the Gigantosaurus's grounds, the Soracore vessel entered a swampy area. The sunset had almost disappeared, giving the night one last caress of colored light. Anyone got any food on this rig? Cameron asked out in the open with Nandy by his side. A couple of teenagers here, you know, trash compactors. Vivian chuckled at his quip. Hope they don't serve bugs on this cruise. You two talking about food again? Emily Ann sat down beside them near the rear of the boat. She started unzipping her duffel bag. At first they confiscated, th confiscated this from me, but thanks to the change in circumstances, my dad got them to give it back. One after another, she handed out the fruit they'd collected on their travels. Oh man, I've missed these apples. Viv took a juicy bite out of hers. All I had for lunch was green onions. Cam smirked. Thought your breath smelled funky. I'm just gonna say, like, it can't be funky. It'd actually be, you know, they're kind of minty in a way. Bogey port side. One of the Soracor men pointed his rifle down to the water. I count one. Make that three, someone from the other side added. Two more on starboard. Everyone with a weapon lined up along the railings. Even Archer picked up his modified elephant rifle and rushed over to his men on the boat's port side. Theodore placed his hands on the railing next to the teens, who separated him from his daughter further down. He glanced over at EA, who looked away when their eyes connected. Still needs more time. Then he studied the approaching 30-foot-long floating creatures. Can this boat go any faster? Gripping his rifle tighter, Archer didn't like the scientist's inquiry. What does that mean? Those are Dinosuchus. Di Dina they recoiled from the railing, and they're extremely territorial. Then let's give these dino crocs a reason to back off. That's not gonna work, I feel like. Archer snickered, pointing the weapon down to the swamp waters. All right, men, fire off some rounds to scare- Snap. Ah! Splash. Ha <laughs> ha! Archer spun around. Where three of his men had stood, only two remained. Near the middle of the boat, Cam held Viv close. Did that poor dude just will on screen? <laughs> Damn, dinos. Archer turned to aim over the railing. <laughs> he stood by. Give them all banana-sized, banana-sized teeth shot out of the swamp. Attached to a six-foot-long snout, it chomped onto the rifle of the Soracor employee beside the superior, pulling the man down and under the churning water. Get back from the railing, Theo suggested, understanding the creature's behavior. With bigger threats, they attack what looks like appendages. With their forces down, to, down two men already, Archer agreed with Dr. Lewis. Fall back, men, and get this ray going fast. Crack! Oh, jeez. Cam recognized the sound as blue light glowed in front of him. Not again. Zap, crackle, snap. What is this? Ice Rice Krispie Treats? <laughs> Rice Krispie Cereal? <laughs> what green onions are you eating? Never mind you that. <laughs> okay. Half submerged, the effort effervescence effervescing light right oh goodness hold on ah okay here we're this is what we're gonna do my eyes are getting tired half submerged the effer effervescing right side i keep wanting to say light instead of right right side of the rift shredded a section of the vessel's front port side the strike pushed the boat over giving most a view of the rift's future side water poured down into the local movie theater of cam and viv's hometown Screaming people clamored out of their seats. Oh, I hope. Oh, wait, okay, I haven't got there yet, but this is what I hope comes. I'm like, you know, manifesting this in the chapter ahead. Um, that the movie they were watching was like something with dinosaurs. Cause how funny would that be? I mean, that's just perfect, you know. Maybe too cliche. I don't know. It's a good thing I'm not writing it. I don't know. Maybe not. I think it's cool. <laughs> 
The only direction most moviegoers could go was down, closer to the screen. EA stood up alongside the teens. Oh, God. One after another, two dinosuchuses swayed their muscular tails and passed through the rift. As the crocodilian dinosaurs thrashed about and descended into the theater, ladder screams erupted. Viv looked down to her left hand, which had been grasping Cam's shirt. It appeared that he didn't mind, so she pushed herself closer to him. There's kids from our school in there. Cam even recognized ones that had bullied him in school. Oh, never mind. Let them go. <laughs> Just sit back, relax. Let things, let nature take its course, you know? Sorry. Never choose violence. Uh, <clears throat> no matter what others had done to him, though, yeah, yeah, exactly, that's what I was about to say. He didn't wish any harm to him. exactly, you know, that's how you should think. He wanted to reach out and help, but knew there was nothing he could do. Crack, zap, crackle, snap, pop. Sorry, that was me. I added the pop. I was cr Rice crispy cereal, you know? On starboard, another space-time gateway ripped open. Another one? Without any chance of stopping, a transport truck barreled through and crashed into the swamp, grazing enough of the boat to push it closer to the first rift. Cars behind it managed to slam on the brakes before reaching the second rift. All of Zorakor's men helplessly watched. Archer's jaw subconsciously dropped. Up in the boat's cockpit, Sebastian shook his head. Zap, zoop, pop, pop. See, there's the pop. Found it. Tiny bits of energy static fizzled as both rifts disintegrated into nothingness. Nobody on the large vessel said a word. Among the silence, a few of Archer's men stood in disbelief. Theo opened his mouth to make a snarky remark, but opted not to, as he witnessed shame on the faces of every gun-toting pers person on the top deck. After rubbing his face, Archer turned and coughed into the air. Um, let's keep moving on, men. <laughs> he mostly stared at the deck as he made his way back to the cockpit. <laughs> Someone... <laughs> Someone get me a status report on the rift's damage to the hole. Don't see the driver coming up. Aw, oh, thank you. Probably died on impact. Around the middle of the boat, Cam helped Viv to her feet. Guess the rifts are getting worse. I can't believe what they just witnessed replayed in his mind. Hopefully no one got hurt. That would have been a horrible 3D experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least you gave me that. That's, that's all I could ask for, honestly. Viv rubbed her cold arms. I've never seen so many scared faces at once. After seeing that, looks like these Sorokor goons are getting a conscious check. EA mentioned as she glanced around, her eyes met her father's. Tucking her hands into her pant pockets, she moseyed over to him. Hey, Dad. Thea gave his daughter a small grin. Are you okay, sweetie? She pulled one of her hands out to rub an elbow. Other than still getting my sea legs, I'm good. Good, he responded, happy to have some kind of conversation with her, even if it was awkward. Glad you're good. Ie looked out over the swamp, which reflected pockets of stars and the moon's grace. I'm guessing you heard my outburst earlier, and you're entitled to your feelings. He'd taken a step closer, hoping he could give her some kind of comfort. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble of... How could you? She faded into a quieter level and tried to reel in her exasperation. I mean, I get why you'd want to stay here, but... Dad, why? Theo scratched at the stubble on his chin. There's times when life presents the door to you. Where'd it go? Talking, taking himself back to the moment he'd been banished. His momentary scowl morphed into a smile. Life always gives you the option to walk, run, or drag your feet across its threshold. Sometimes it doesn't even give you the option and throws you right through it and you can't do anything about it, no matter how hard you may try. Another step closer to her, he found it easier to connect with her gaze. Even if that door closes behind you once you're through, it's what you make of the other side that matters. There are more rifts opening up, though, she countered, hoping the softness in her voice would convince him to go home with her. Doors are opening again, which will only take me back to a world of hypocritical, selfish, war-torn humanity that keeps searching for peace, but is always failing to find it. Slipping an arm around her shoulders, he gave her a gentle squeeze. Plus, if I go back to the present, Zorkor and the paleontology community still have a hit on my head. Unless my findings fit the narrative of what general science, and in this case, paleontology, has going, my research is null. I would rather live somewhere that's far away from all that, or in this case, some time. 
Ea completely understood his logic and reasoning, though she still didn't want to accept it. He thinks he has no future in the future. At this point, she figured there wouldn't be much she could say to make him change his mind. Taking her fully into his arms, he kissed her forehead. Ah. This prehistoric world is ominous as it may appear. This is my paradise. Sniffles came from her nose as she used a free hand to wipe at her tear ducts. As for mine, it will never feel complete without you in it. I'm prepared to hear that too. Hear that? Thea wrapped her right up in both arms as his chest tightened. He never thought he would or could hurt his daughter in any way. It warmed his heart to have her by his side, but her disagreement with his choices made his arms ache. Wherever and whenever you are, I will always love you. With her face on his chest, she managed to respond, I love you too, Dad. The embrace continued for a few more seconds until he angled his head down to whisper, Ah, I think you. Ah, uh, whisper. Now, go tell your friends that I'm leading Sorcor into a trap. Ah, oh, I knew it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, but now I do. <laughs> the sudden swerve in conversation made EA try to pull away. Wait, what are... Please, sweetie. Theo kept a firm grip on her. Don't make a scene and trust me. I'll let you all... I'll get you all out of here. But to do that, we need the Gigantosaurus. Okay. That's an hour reading time. We are... Got to chapter 43. Woof. Okay. Well. That was exciting. Well. What do we think of that? I mean, I knew that he had a plan. Oh, nice. Delicious, delicious. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out and listening to Dino Rift by Derek Bourne. Thank you, Derek, for the lovely story that we have to read now and share this time together. <laughs> and, um... I'm cheating on you. Wait, what? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. And if you would like to buy the, a copy of the book yourself um, and also the second book in the series, um, go to my Amazon storefront. There's a link in my bio. And um, in my storefront, there's like a reading, like, like a, let me look at it because I keep forgetting. It's there. Like, I'm pretty sure the photo's right there. Um, let me see your list. It is called Books and Media. And if you click on the Books and Media, it's it should be, uh, on my side at least, it's the top, the first products, the first books listed are um, the first and second book series in... Um, either... Has it, I have two, the t both versions, and I can't remember what the both versions were. But it's both versions that were on, that's on Amazon. So, yeah. Well, it was nice to see you. Excited about Nandy's return. I love Nandy. <laughs> it's just getting really good, too. It is getting really good. And that's why we're going to take a pause. But if you cannot wait to read the next section, the next chapters, and you need to know what happens next, then hurry up and order your copy of the book right now on my Amazon storefront. And you should be able to get it in the next day or two. And that's probably sooner than I'll read the next chapter, so. <laughs> My bot is in... Wait. <laughs> Make sure it's in her name. <laughs> King. <laughs> all right. I love you all. I hope you have a good, one, wonderful evening. And even though I had some, you know, shenanigans that I can't help myself with, I apologize, kind of. Not really, but um, I hope that it helped you go to sleep maybe you know relax you to bed with my nice you want my copy i will be giving not i will be giving away my copies that i read um because derek was generous enough to actually um gift me with my own personal copies that are signed by him and since i can't get him to sign these copies for you guys um i will be signing them because that's really all I have to offer <laughs> um, for whoever, you know, and that's going to be future. When, once I finish the book, I'll figure out the details of how to even do that. I'm um, going to head to bed. Good night.
Good evening. Have a good, wonderful evening. Um, hope you and your wife have a wonderful sleep. Good night. And thank you for the rose. I'm doing good, doing good. All right, good night, everybody. Thank you again. I'm going to go ahead and end this stream, and maybe I'll edit it later. I don't know. We'll find out.